Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the 537th edition of Talking Professional Wrestling in a Mayhem fashion. The Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in uh, luscious Pittsburgh, PA. Ready with a crew that's making noises on the Twitter machine uh, right here. Uh, and with me as uh, from Poughkeepsie, New York, he is Mad Mike at Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. Is the only of us with a Future Endeavor letter from the WWE. And you can tell they didn't fire me because my sick dance moves, so mm-hmm. mm, 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 Bring it. Mm, bring it. I'm mm, feeling mm, it. I'm mm. feeling it. I'm feeling Hashtag something. Hashtag free Mike's guns. What? Oh, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kidding, Sorg. Kidding. Jeez. Got the sleeves. Jeez. Got also, the sleeves. Also with us, he's joining us from Dallas, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. That comes out of Austin. You can check them on, out on Smart Mark Video. He is Eamon Payton. He's the short one. Uh, in the, she's the short one in the picture. If you're curious, the other guy. And so, and so, who is the who is the picture with? Hold on, I gotta check my note here. Zach Saber Jr. Yes, because before I'm gonna out Sorg here. Before no! the break, he said, no! "No, I'm gonna do it, Sorg." Before no! the break, he said I was pictured with Will Ospreay. No. <laughs> I want to pull up a picture of Will Ospreay here. Like, I was close, wasn't I? No? No! Yes? No, no, not close at all. Well, he did the um, he did that, that, that match that everybody loved or hated, right? Yeah. Like, with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. Dude looks kind of like him. I mean, Sorg, come Sorg. on. I think, I mean, if you do it, like that, that's, no, I that's that's fine. He's, Sorg, not all Caucasian independent wrestlers look alike. Listen, all white British dudes look alike to me, okay? Um, that match was against Dragon Azteca Jr., right? <laughs> right, oh exactly. Ah, there we go. Bobby no. FJ Town from Johnstown, PA, joining us this week. How you doing, Bobby? It's been like two months. I'm How's back. It been? Ha- no. Yeah, Bobby. Can You had I've, so I've had like, wanted posters up. I went back in time for a little while. I I got a note here. In Wait, the were Slack. you Senior Benjamin? No, Ooh. no, I was not Senior Benjamin. That's, I had a note it here. Sounds awfully familiar. I had a note <laughs> now here. I wanna, now I want to see Bobby as a Mexican landscaper. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I had a note we here that Bobby F J Town uh, had a lot of laundry to do every week when I, I when yeah, I did a call I for for me. So <laughs> he's foregoing yeah. his laundry. I've collected a lot of Funko Pops, as you can see. My room is my walls are basically oh, made of geez. them now. Oh jeez, Bobby, 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 Bobby I'm so problem. worried. I'm so worried I about do. you. I Bobby, just got a new one today. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby is, it, no. is it the Even Marie Pop? Uh, no, uh, it's actually Goku with the metallic Goku one. From Luke Great. Okay. Mm. But I, I have my wrestling ones all in front of me. I have two Dan O'Briens now. Anyways, uh, Funko Popcast <laughs> has now ended. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You subscribe to us on Stitcher Speaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcast, as well as video versions on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook. We're posting those there as well. The Raw Wrap-Up, you guys are really loving that from the looks of things, and we really appreciate that. And you can check out other things like the Midweek War. They just had an hour and a half talk with Chris DeJoseph. It's Mad Mike and Mainstream Matt basically just trying to get Chris to Joseph to slip. He did. And he did. He did. <laughs> he did. He may not even remember it, but he did. Yes. Amazing. Go check he that out. He gave us a direct spoiler, and I don't think he even realized it. <laughs> we haven't he also, done- Sorg, he did give us one very vague spoiler. I'm not going to say what it is. You got to watch the show to find out. Yeah. But, oh, man, Matt and I are considering doing a pool about it. Go pick it apart yourself yeah. over there. Check it out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. The Midweek War. Lucha Underground. Uh, and, of course, please uh, check us out. Well, join us here live. Uh, Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com every Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. It may not be the show, but we will be talking something uh, relatively close to wrestling. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time after SmackDown. Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Good times. Good times. At Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot 
wrestlingmayhem.com. And you can also check us out. Please uh, follow us on the Patreon, patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow, uh, where you can uh, be a boss for the show, just like our good friends, Bo Diggity, Woo! as well as Alex Cars, the Jennifer and Matthew Carlin's uh, Foundation for Podcasts, Betterment, and Ed Burke. And Bobby, you're not still on there, are you? Yes. You are yeah. still on there, Bobby. You have J-Town also a part of that as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, become a boss. You get uh, some special stuff. We talked about on Gold this week um, a special project that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, I don't know how exciting it's going to be for a lot of you. Some of you guys internally are very excited for this. Uh, it's going to um, possibly be detrimental to my own personal health and safety. Uh, so that has to get you excited. Get a little head start on it. Uh, follow the clues over on Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, uh, and, and going to jump Springfield Gorge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's get into the show. Damn you, Lance Murdoch. <laughs> So let's talk the non-wrestling thing. Let's get this out of the way. Everybody wants to talk about this. Everybody's got an opinion on this. Everybody has been fairly nice about this, to be quite honest. Considering Colin Kaepernick. Oh, no. No, 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 Got in the cage this weekend. Apparently, the Carly Field children drunk. don't know who he is. Um, against the consummate heel, AJ Lee's husband. <laughs> 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 oh, is that the one that they keep chanting during her matches for? Yeah, 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 that's, a, yeah. Uh, that's a guy. I think he writes comic books or something. But no, CM Punk. He writes a comic. Book. His first uh, UFC appearance. Um, there was a documentary leading into it too. I watched the first episode of that. The documentary lasted way longer. Than the, the documentary was way more entertaining than than the fight for for, for that much money. Um, so so it was um it was something. Um, yeah. CM Punk did not do well. CM Punk got torn apart. CM Punk lasted, what was it, a minute and 23 seconds, Mike? I, I was estimating, but yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. about a minute and a half, yeah. Um, he, he lasted a, a quarter of the old day segment from right. last week's Raw. <laughs> and, and many will compare this to Brock Lesnar. Like, well, Brock Lesnar did well when he first came in. Well, Brock Lesnar lost his first fight. And I think there's some very severe differences in this. Yeah, not um, that yeah, yeah. Brock Lesnar. Well, hold on, hold on. What, what, hold on. Everybody wants to get that opinion yeah. at the same time. But, Sorry. I mean, Brock Lesnar was an NCAA champion before mm. this. Um, not so much martial arts. He definitely built on top of that. But he had combat sport experience, right? CM Punk basically has been a wrestler, like a pro wrestler. Like, I don't think he even did amateur wrestling in high school that I'm aware of, right? No, uh, he wasn't even trained to be a professional wrestler. He just did this shit by himself. <laughs> exactly. If you watch his documentary, he never went to a wrestling school. Yeah, yeah. So, no, actually, no, he did. He did. Uh, he afterwards, did. but okay, he not, did eventually. not when he started. A lot of guys start in the, in the, in the backyard. Uh, Hanson was on Cole Cabana I was listening to today, and he started as a, like, a hardcore backyard wrestler and then, and then went and got trained. A lot of people, I did still. Um, but still, and I think everything went as much as you can expect. Man, Joe Rogan was tough on him, like like respectful but tough on him, because I think he was a little offended that they did this. And 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 even Dana White has come out and says CM Punk's next fight probably should not be in the UFC. But not all. So <laughs> it probably shouldn't be Punk after. versus Lashley. <laughs> Punk versus Lashley. Right, it, it, should be in- it, it probably shouldn't be in a promotion that you know put them on the cover of their video, him on the cover of their video game, <laughs> and you know gave him all of this money without even having one fight. Like you know, like whatever. It, it, it's a cash in. Um, it, I, I fear. I don't know. Maybe not. But I fear that the UFC is taking advantage of CM Punk. On this <laughs> a little thing. bit. Uh, <laughs> really? You think? Like a little bit, a little bit. I, I, because it's it's not fair. Like on paper, none of this worked. He should not have been against somebody like. But then again, anybody that would have pulled up to fight him probably shouldn't have also been on pay per view with him. So, uh, 
and there's, been a, there's been a well, yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of response from like I know a lot of wrestlers tweeted and 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 other people saying like you know, just by doing it, Punk's already won. Yeah, like that's yeah. That, that's their idea. Like he did something that nobody else, that not a lot of people could do. And you know what? Yes, that's mm-hmm. true. Not a lot of people can do what he did. Fair hey, enough. Hundred percent. Kevin James. Hey, hey, Sork, Sork. Hmm. Do you want to know how much money CM Punk made per second of his fight? Well, it was kind of a flat fee, wasn't it? For the for the uh, loss. Yeah, yeah, but I, 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 it was a flat fee of five hundred thousand dollars for one fight. Mm-hmm. Um, now the fight lasted one hundred thirty-four seconds. So CM Punk made three thousand seven hundred thirty-one dollars and thirty-four cents per second. Of getting his face punched in. Yeah. Like Baron Corbin, he doesn't get paid by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, here's my thing. Like, like, yes, commendable that he did something. And, and actually, and, and people were raving about his speech that he gave afterwards. About how it's, you know, the whole classic, it's not about getting knocked down, it's about getting back up. And here's my thing. It sounds like a really good speech for somebody that la- – for somebody that actually kind of put up an evenly contested fight and lost, like if, if this was an evenly contested fight, uh, hard fought match, a match that adds very much importance to Punk, and he lost and he gave that speech afterwards, yeah, that's extremely moving. Did he, quote he, got, he, got, he got, he didn't just get beat in a minute 30, he got dominated in a minute 30. I'm not even sure he landed a strike. Like if he, he did, yeah, if he, he landed. Did. He did. If he landed a strike, okay, maybe. Like, and, and and again, commendable for what he did. But like, was his speech really that inspirational? If he just got his ass kicked for a minute thirty, like, it's not. Like, yeah, it, it, the reason particularly, the- particularly, also from the fact that if you're going to go into the weigh in and not shake the dude's hand, you better bring something. Yeah, yeah, like. I mean, the reason the the speech that Rocky gives at the end of the first Rocky movie is so inspiring is because that match went fifteen rounds and he lost. Imagine if Rocky gave that speech after after Apollo knocked him out within the first two minutes of the match. <laughs> so, so can it I? Wouldn't have been nearly as good. Everyone would have been like, "Oh, well, that's kind of what we expected." And so the equivalent, <laughs> if you help me, the equivalent is, and and I honestly, I. I like the speech that he gave. I respect it. I think, you know, good for him on this. It's a little bit of good on him for having the guts, but also he wouldn't even have this opportunity if he wasn't CM Punk. So it's a little bit of celebrity factor in there too, right? I agree with Joe Rogan on that. But he didn't even use his name, Phil Brooks, but, in the match. But um, it, the speech that he gave after a fight like that is like if Brock Lesnar gave a really emotional speech after getting cut by the Vikings. And the, well, it, here, here's exactly what it would be. It would be if they, after um, the Sheamus Daniel Bryan WrestleMania match, where Bryan lost in eight seconds or whatever, if Bryan gave a really emotional speech about how hard fought that match was, that's what it would be. Yeah. And we would be like, yeah. what? No, that's <laughs> not accurate at all. Which, that could be really funny. By the way, that, that, could I, be a, that could be a funny thing to do as a heel. By the way, like, AJ Lee, present for both. One-sided defeats. Well, actually, I don't think she was there. Was yeah, she, the she yeah, she was. I thought Punk said he didn't want her to be there. Oh, because right. he said it, I think he said in an interview he didn't want her to be there because oh. people were going to yell shit at her because they knew who she was. Like, well, I'm assuming she saw Punk it anyway. Either. Yeah, she, she was going to chant Adrian. <laughs> all yeah. right, all right. Well, like I said, I but, watched. Well, go ahead, Mike. You got something else uh, on this? Yeah, th- there's there's a more solid comparison to. For the CM Punk fight, and it involves the show Friends. Now, now um, I don't remember what season it was, but which, John which, Favreau which, was a guest which, star on. Friends. By the way, I'm very curious because a friend of our friend of the show used to be a writer for Friends. Excellent. Let me, let me I, look, I uh, continue with your story and let me investigate something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, so John Favreau was a guest star on Friends for uh, about half a season. He was a billionaire playboy guy. He was dating Monica, and uh, their relationship had gotten fairly serious in terms of the show. And um, and he said he wanted to marry Monica, 
But there was one dream he had to do before he could marry her. And it's because it's, it's something he couldn't buy because he was very rich. And he wanted to be an ultimate fighter. <laughs> and there is actually an episode where Monica and Ross go to a UFC show and John Favreau gets beat the hell up by Tank Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you if you watch that part, that's basically what the CM Punk fight was. It's also kind of James trying to be a UFC fighter in a movie. Yeah, <laughs> but he actually, like, but Bobby, I, I've seen bits and pieces of that movie. He actually had fights beforehand and won those fights. Kevin James? No, yeah, Kevin James. Oh. Yeah, That's yeah, like- he had he had some amateur fights before he went to the UFC, and he won those amateur fights. And he uh, also donated all of his proceeds to his school in that movie. <laughs> CM Punk is just going to keep that money. <laughs> But Let's yeah, um, but, but no, I, I'll definitely take a lot from Punk's speech and, and and the inspiration behind it. You know, always follow your dream with limits. <laughs> <laughs> follow your dreams; you can reach your goals. He's living proof. Can we talk? Uh, Kevin James fought a gorilla and Paul Blart. By the way, <laughs> 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 just want to put that out there in in the space. <laughs> Kevin James fought a gorilla and Paul Blart Mall Cop. His MMA record is more successful. Yeah, no, no, that was a Zookeeper Paul's. movie. Yeah, that's right. Something. <laughs> something. He fought a gorilla somewhere. I don't know. So it's more how... successful MMA record than CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> so if CM Punk took on a gorilla. I believe he already has. He's currently changed his name to Ryback. Oh, oh. Ah, tie-in, Sorg. Oh. Tie-in. Oh. Tie-in. I, coming to call to CBS. Even after what happened this past weekend, I would still pay for that fight. <laughs> <laughs> if UFC, <laughs> well, no, all, all honestly, if UFC still wants to make some money after off of some more fights from Punk, that's the fight to book. Kevin yeah, James or CM Punk? They're not in the same weight class, though, Amen. Yeah, well, fuck it. Who cares? No, they would never do that. Yeah, well, they would never do that in a million years. Well. Listen then UFC doesn't like money. Whatever. UFC is a legitimate sport, Eamon. And of course they They're like legitimate. And of course they like money because they booked CM Punk on that show last <laughs> this is the weekend. Yeah, they, they so, gave him five hundred thousand dollars. They probably made billions yeah, of Or it. let's bring in Brock Lesnar for a fight just because. Um, and then let's let's just, you know, sidestep the fact that he probably is juicing because you know, <laughs> he's Brock Lesnar. Of hey, course he is. Brock Le- you gonna tell him not to juice? Brock Lesnar's uh may have uh, juiced uh, may have may be on something into your fight in your official fight, uh, according to the Athletic Commission. Eh, money. <laughs> <laughs> but but money though. But but money. Don't you, you like see, this the money? Think about money. <laughs> you, don't you like this money? Right, right, okay. Thanks yeah, for letting I mean, us know. It's not for a title. Why? Why is it there? Why is it there? So, anyway, well, as I said, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see a, a an MMA WWE stable of like Brock, Punk, and Lashley. Yeah. <laughs> I want them can to Shamrock? Go. That would good. Sure, Ken Shamrock can be like Dan a, Severn's still wrestling. Like Dan Severn, Kurt yeah. Angle. Say this is all a rich tapestry we're working this. in. I love like, this, and they're just the biggest a holes because they're like we're the real, we're the real, we're the real. You, you get hey, you know what? You know who's looking for a job? Alberto Del Rio. You hey. can throw him in there too. He's trying to start an MMA company. That'll go well. Uh, James Ellsworth <laughs> for reasons. He had a press conference. <laughs> Did you say Alberto Del Rio, Alberto Patron, had a press conference about leaving WWE. Is he El Patron again? Tires. Yeah, because there was a giant banner behind him that says Al- Alberto uh, uh, whatever Patron behind yeah, him. That was, the, that was the advertisement for the liquor he's going to sell in his restaurant. Oh, <laughs> I guess so. Um, yeah, because it, 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 the biggest news from it was that he would be um, doing, doing stuff in Mexico within the next 30 days. And something like like he was going to be open in, in sixty for America. So I also love that he here said, in Mexico, guys. Well, I love that he said he didn't know if he was going to CMLL or AAA, which is almost to imply like like maybe I'm not going back to AAA because yeah. I gotta fuck them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like like, uh, and also I bet neither of them had contacted him yet because. No. Uh, well, anyways, um, it, poor Paige. Poor Paige. Oh, I don't even know. Poor Paige. Poor Paige. She's apparently, allegedly, she's getting lawyers prepared for something. Like, yep. 
for something, apparently. I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh, um, Mexico, that's what that's something. She'll is. do really well in Mexico. She um, is going to burn I, I down do you there. say this, this is my house in Spanish? Girl, <laughs> casa. Es mi casa. <laughs> es mi casa. Oh, boy. Oh. I want to find out what a British accent sounds like in Spanish. Um, anyways. <laughs> es mi casa, governor. Come on! <laughs> <That was laughs> I love the page just turned cockney in your mind. You know what? You know what? I'm just gonna ask Bobby questions for Paige, um, um, as uh, uh, Bobby's version of uh, uh, Paige and Espanol. If all, all sword knows, I'm standing next to Paige in that photo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that photo just became the cover art for this episode. <laughs> sword, sword. Um, Alex Carr said in the chat room, "Your ankle is sexist." <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> Not I, I, only, I only said it because it's a great burn. <laughs> it's a great burn. But no, by um, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, what's with this? Like, what's happening? Is this just a big total diva story? <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe. The most intricate worked reality shoot thing ever. Because right. they said she's quit. But like WWE hasn't announced anything that she's quit. That's because she, pro- show. she probably can't do anything until all of her Total Diva stuff airs. Yeah, they'll still have to uh, show her Total yeah. Diva stuff because they already filmed it. It's in the can. Yeah, mm. Total Divas hasn't even started yet, y'all. <laughs> Make way for House of Bellas or whatever it is. But imagine, like, they, well, at least they have a backup, I guess. Then, but like, yeah. don't they usually have to film like, like the I don't know what they're called in reality TV, but like the interviews they do like in front of a camera or whatever. Like, don't oh, they have man. to do those in post? No, they don't do those in post. Uh, they probably no, no, because if you if you look at what they if you look at what they look like, is what I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, no, they they film them around the same time because their hair looks the same. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow, that is you know, wow. Mike knows how this works. <laughs> I Sorg, I did do a Total Divas wrap up podcast for two years, and we would have done last season if Jen Cullen got her shit together. <laughs> But yeah, like, uh, this just seems so, like, what is happening with Paige? Like, this makes me kind of sad, but also, like, I really don't care because I don't I haven't cared about her wrestling in a little while. Uh, but, like... Not her yeah. fault, to be fair. Not her <laughs> fault, to be fair. Well, I, th- well mm. I think partially her fault. I don't think she's been really exciting in the ring. Mm-hmm. Like, even the stuff she's been given. Like, our, like, our joke has been, like, all like any page match all i remember is that she says this is my house like five times like that's all you know she it's it's not amazing but also i don't want her to be going through like a, like it feels like a mental breakdown almost because it's like there's this and there was that stuff that was happening where after that one pay-per-view where it's like she was calling the cops on someone and like like i don't know i don't know what's going on yeah it's not amazing it's not even a may a a a wow <laughs> wow. Well, uh, we'll go like, as, I, as I mentioned, I watched the entire UFC pay per view, and then I watched one that actually I liked in uh, WWE Backlash. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, so, uh, but in the meantime, you want to support some independent professional wrestling? There's a great opportunity over at IndieWrestling.us. Hey, uh, posted is uh, aggression this week. Aggression 2016. I told you I'd get that done eventually. Great match with Sanjay Dutt. Uh, taking on Shane Andrews, the uh, current heavyweight champion. And uh, and I believe RWA has fixed their website. I was kind of confused when they dro- they they floated back to 2012. Uh, <laughs> some weird error there. Uh, but they're going. And also a lot of friends of the show, Marshall Gambino, Jason Gorey, Generation Dead with G-Raver, um, um, and, 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 and uh, Jim, Jimmy the Flying Hippie. Is a part of this as well. Uh, uh, Mar- uh, 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 our super hentai, a part of this. Bobby Shields, uh, rocking some sweet, sweet Zubas. Check it out; it's an awesome show. RWA Aggression 2016, as well as um, other releases like uh, Very European: The Travels of uh, Claudio Castagnoli, which is also available on uh, DVD and digital download over Smart Mark Video DVD over at HighSpots.com. Look up all the International Wrestling Cartel. Um, uh, releases on either of those sites. Renegade Wrestling Alliance is over at smartmarkvideo.com. If you subscribe 
to the newsletter, which also includes updates about the Wrestling Mayhem Show over at IndieWrestling.us or WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you'll get a, you'll get a free IWC uh, show, including uh, some guy named AJ Styles that just won the championship, and a few other uh, great names as well for free. So you can check out some digital downloads from 2009. That show is holy cow, um, fantastic show from way back then. Um, so uh, and it's actually the 100th episode uh, issue, uh, yeah, show for IWC International Wrestling Cartel. Some great stuff coming up in the area. Riz is around the Indies column to get updated on what you missed around the Indies in the weekend before, um, as well as the Indie Mayhem show and so much more. We got a lot of great stuff coming up for that. Um, actually, I'll do a side plug here. Uh, we actually have scheduled, and we're going to try to stream them live. Uh, check the times and everything over on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page um, for the events. Walking Weapon, Josh Alexander, will be joining us this Thursday at 8 p.m. And then next Monday, we're going to be recording an uh, interview with Matt Light, comedian Matt Light. Uh, you may have seen the Stone Cold um, um, stunner done at the Pittsburgh Improv video going mm-hmm. around, which I believe I believe he did that on the, um, the, uh, the, the, the venue promoter, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's also going to be opening for Rob Van Dam on his comedy tour that's going to be coming through town. Uh, um, and which, hell, I got handed a, a flyer for it with Vicious Outcast Wrestling on the flyer, like all the way out in Easton, PA at Chikara. So uh, go check that out. Uh, check out times for that. Join us live for those. Hit us with any questions on the Facebook groups or on the tour at Mayhem Show. And, uh, and, and uh, some really cool stuff coming. AndyWrestling.us. So, um... Backlash happened, um, and I gotta say, I I know we talked about like kind of questionable going into this show. I thought the show delivered. I thought I not all of us saw SmackDown yet tonight, but I think SmackDown has found its footing and its identity. Uh, I know, Mike, you said um, uh, when we we were asking about what you learned from Smack uh, Backlash the other day, um, you said all the boring people lost, uh, mm-hmm. and and you're right. Still true. And I think that's I think there is definitely a shift happening there, and we saw that continue tonight on the show. Um, I think I'm not going to say SmackDown's better than Raw as a whole because there's less. To, there's, awesome. there's also less. Uh, now here, okay. Well, they may pass them in the ratings soon. Really? The, the, apparently, the ratings for this week's Raw are bad. Well, wow. it's, it's, up against, it's up against football. Football. with the NFL, but but even still, like some like like if you look at the like. Graph or whatever of like the ratings, they they're, still, they're, still, they're going down. Can't like, wait till Tuesday night football. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't shut your mouth because it very well. Yeah, might it's be. gonna happen. It's very. Is it, that's the one that's gonna be on Twitter. Um, with color rush uniforms. <laughs> but, uh, but everyone's so, just stealing Naomi's gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but still, I, I I think between that, I like the John Cena coming back tonight. Um, and where that puts mm-hmm. Dean, Dean doesn't have to be try to be super lunatic babyface uh, as he has been. Uh, he, he has something to play off of there. Uh, our ladies and our tag teams are established. And holy crap, like we talked about a little bit about how deep the roster is for the women last night on the Raw wrap up, but this SmackDown roster is deep, like in both mm-hmm. of those those groups. And we still don't even have Eva back yet. No. Yeah. No, we have we have six very Still viable vacation. ladies working here. We have Baron Corbin doing stuff. We have we have the Miz doing well, Miz things. See, see the thing about SmackDown is SmackDown has some of the most the most interesting characters in WWE. They also have some of the most boring characters in WWE. So it's kind of a it's kind of a weird balance because like Miz doing some of the best stuff of his career. Heath Slater is amazing. Uh, Jordan and Gable, probably one of the most exciting teams in WWE. Um, Becky Lynch is being awesome, as she always is. But then you have, like, uh, for those of you who didn't watch SmackDown, Ray Wyatt and Randy Orton has had, had a segment. They did. They mm-hmm. sure did. And they, they sure talked. Mm-hmm. And, like... It, dr- it drags down the show. It no, drags down the show the for the like, entire show. It does, and and you know, I, I obviously the pay per view I don't think was perfect. Uh, I think the Bray Orton Kane stuff oh, wasn't. God, that was horrible. They should have just scrapped it. They yeah, I would just I, scrapped the whole thing I, and done like Baron Corbin versus Kalisto or something. I would, I would honestly wouldn't mind them 
scrapping it or put, just put Baron Apollo that they did on the pre-show, put it on the main yeah. show, whatever. Um, but other than that, that pay-per-view was much better than it, than expected. It was much better than it had any right to be. There was um, there was a good, and I think there's a good reason for that. Um, I was so I've been watching the puppet. I have watched the puppet <laughs> videos lately. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a good um, point on that. Sorry. Was um um it's the sorry, uh, you don't have a good relationship with puppets. I have I have I have I'm I'm starting a new, and I've I've developed a new relationship with this puppet you, on Facebook. You you heard it here first. Puppet will be back in the wrestling mayhem. Well, I, you know what? Puppet. I would interview that puppet. Like I I seriously want to do an interview with the puppet. Drug puppet so. I found my dragon puppet. Oh God! Robbie, we stop can him, we man. can recreate this right now. What the hell? <laughs> What is that? It's a dragon. <laughs> what? The? His name's Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I like backlash a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the third Lucha Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no arms. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, you were saying <laughs> there was a point that the puppet made. Okay, um, <laughs> that. <laughs> Bobby, you broke sword. What are the okay, <laughs> like? Basically, that they gave time. Like I was just yep. going past ten o'clock, and the hell of a show even ended pretty much twenty minutes earlier than expected. But still, there was a lot of time in the ladies' match. There was a lot of time in, in the main event. Um, there was a lot of time for us to get to know the new Usos, uh, which I'm I'm completely okay with. Uh, there's there was a lot of time to do a lot of things, and and I, I there's a lot of time to tell the stories in the ring. And yep. I, and that was fantastic. And I know not a lot of people agree with me, but I thought, given whatever the situation was with Randy Orton, I thought the game thing was done perfectly. Everybody's bitching about Bray losing yet again. Yeah, but it took two people to beat him. Yeah, but, but it, it also, doesn't matter. It but doesn't also, why? Matter. Also, why are we giving wins to Kane? Yeah, I think it would have been. No, I, I I disagree with that. So, and I'm not trying to be contrarian, but like, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be more important for Bray to? Attack and injure Randy Orton, and then be Kane, because doesn't that build Bray up to the match yeah. with Randy? Mm-hmm. They should have just left it at him attacking Randy Orton, and that was it. Or mm-hmm. have or have him be Kane. Why is Kane yeah. beating him? Yeah. Why is yeah. Kane beating him? That doesn't make you. Know, I mean, I, even if you want, or whatever, no, here's, like, okay. Here, if you want to be, you know, armchair booking on this, uh, it, it, it's you had okay. Randy obviously got hurt. There was a problem. He got hurt. You advertised even on the pre-show. They were still advertising this match is completely going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. You you have what happened there. I think the crowd obviously like there was some we want Randy chance even when Kane was out there. Randy Good. Randy comes out and delivers an RKO. You wrap that up, give the crowd what they want. The people that the the, 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 the hey, that, it, you hey shouldn't sorry. Sorry. you shouldn't whoa, 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 whoa. That hey you do it after the match getting hurt though do it after the match. What was the point of him getting hurt? What like. Do it after the match. Well, I think he was legitimately like, hurt and couldn't perform. Yeah, no, he he got hurt on a house yeah. show. Yeah, they went, no, I mean, what was what was the point of him getting hurt backstage with Bray Wyatt? Why why take him out of the match to only have him come back and do a wrestling move in because the Because Randy Orton was Wyatt. advertised to be there. He was advertised to be but there, and, and depending yeah, on the depending on the, hold on hold on, hold on. depending does. on the injury, he could have pulled off that move. It's enough to do that. Then that's Hashtag. that's fine. It's There's like a, when Austin was injured and he was able to still stunner people. Exactly. Hashtag card subject to change. <laughs> but yeah, and, and I'm sorry. Like, even if you it, fine, have Randy Orton come out afterwards and have Bray beat him up. If if the whole point is you advertise Randy Orton, so Randy Orton has to be on the show. That doesn't mean you have to sacrifice Bray in the process. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. other uh, there's much other options you could have done. I am fine with them doing Bray against Kane, but Bray had to win. There was no reason why Kane should have won. Bill, because uh, they're going to do they're going to do Orton Bray next month, clearly. And Bill, guess what? Bray's going to lose. Yeah, again, like there is no reason. Like I keep insisting, they're spelling his name wrong. It's W H Y. Because no one cares about Bray Wyatt. I do. Because they, I like they, Bray Wyatt. I like Bray Wyatt never, too. No, I like whoa, 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 whoa. no, Bray. Bray looked great against. <laughs> I like him as a friend. Yeah, but I don't like him <laughs> as a character. <laughs> Bray, but it, like when he started in NXT, he had so much promise. Right. Then they brought him to the main roster. He had so much promise. Right. He's been bad guy fodder, He's, and the problem is, like, he would have been okay. 
How many times did Papa Shango win? Okay, in the in, well, in the this is Orton, no, 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 This no, no. is not Papa Shango. Also, also, the feud is Orton Bray. The feud is Orton Bray. Kane and Bray was just a side thing that they yeah. had to do in order to you know build some time before doing Orton Bray when Orton was healthy. Why? Why have him get beat before the big blow off? Why Kane doesn't, Kane doesn't need to be protected. Kane's been there it's twenty solid. years. He doesn't need a pay per view win. If you're, I understand, Sorg. I understand that a monster needs to be built up to be beat by the babyface, and I understand that concept. But why have him be beat in a sub thing that's not as important as the main feud? I don't think the win is as important here. It is. No, it, is it isn't. Because no, no because it isn't. Now, it seriously, why are isn't. they even feuding, Sorg? Why are they feuding? Uh, because uh, Bray Bray Wyatt said some uh, uh, is trying to prove himself as the monster and and he took uh, Orton out last night and some bibbly bobbly stuff. I don't know. I, I kind of so was doing no something reason. else during that. There's, there, there's no actual story. The guys don't Just like each other. That's enough. But there's no reason for them not to like each other. Like it, it's not like Bray Wyatt came out and caused Randy Orton to lose to Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. It's just right. like randomly Bray Wyatt said, Oh, Randy, you're not a man anymore. Like, here's my question. Here's my question. Sword. It, by how, by doing what they did at the pay-per-view, how does this help Bray building Bray towards Orton? How does it help him in this feud? How does it help tell the story? How does it help Bray? And it, it helps Bray because Bray was destroying Kane, destroying Kane. And then Randy, uh, still goes in and sticks his nose in and beats him. So now Bray has more beef with him and proves that he can't, he couldn't, couldn't be beat one on one. In the meantime, and in, in, in the, it's a, it's the best of a bad situation. It's not the best of a no, bad. There's so much no. better they could have. You done. could have had Bray easily beat Kane because he was doing that. Then it makes Bray look strong, and during his celebration, the lights go out, the fireflies come up, and oh no, there's Orton with a sudden RKO in the right. fireflies. Or- Orton can get the best of Bray after the match, but the fact that Bray doesn't win against Kane is ridiculous. Because yeah. uh, Bray doesn't look like a threat to Orton. Mm-hmm. He's ne- Bray has never looked like a threat. Because they haven't built him properly. Yeah, he's never looked like a threat. Why would Orton even want a match with Bray now if he can literally just walk in, give him an RKO, and boop, I'm done? Well, I want to agree to disagree so we can move on from this because I hate having the Bray always lose a show happen here. Uh, But still, we had AJ and Dean looked great. All the rest of the (laughs) And I love this pay per view. This paper Mm -hmm. was great. This pay per view was awesome. Can we talk about uh, uh, one one thing real quick? Uh, I know what this is going to be, Bobby. Um, I, during the, the ladies match, I had a change of heart and I, I, I was all for Becky Lynch until Alexa Bliss walked out dressed mm. as Harley Quinn. Holy mm-hmm. hell. And I switched allegiances right away. <laughs> she was on the pre-show. And, and, and spoiler alert, she's still dressed like that tonight on SmackDown Live. Oh, and she's the, so the whole contender, so. I, I fainted. Right. She didn't do the full on makeup though. Like, I was gonna like say she she's not really night. Harley Quinn. She's just a blonde and pig. She's a blonde and pig. I don't care. She, I she, do not no, care. She's a, it's, oh, I, and I'm I'm all approving, but she's not Harley. Don't ruin Quinn. this for me, Mike. She's she doesn't even have a malice she's, or a bat. She's she Harley. Like, Come on, Mike. She's Harley Quinn inspired. I, I she's wearing pigtails. Yes, that's it. Yes, well, that's I color, the color scheme. What's, I know that no, color her color scheme. scheme hasn't changed. I spoke to Billy Kay. <laughs> she said that we have an open fictional relationship, <laughs> and, and that you know I, I I can approach Alexa Bliss and get rejected like everybody else. <laughs> oh, Bobby! Hashtag resting bliss face. She's already, she's, already dre- she's already not only dressed as a Freddy from Friday the Third. Or, yeah, yeah, Freddy. Yeah. But, but she's made her her associates also dressed like that for no reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should. Uh, well, somebody said on the uh, the other forum that uh, they should. Actually, I said I said this. They should dress them up in these 1966 Batman henchman costumes. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. I'd be entirely okay with that. They should bring that back with her. Either that or have Apollo Crews beat Deadshot. 
give wouldn't it be character. great wouldn't it be great if they did bring blake and murphy up they got back together and everything and they're basically just lackeys for alexa bliss like, that's what they they're were. not comp- but but like not like they were the <laughs> but yeah but she again. was still but they were still the tag team champions right but this these ones it's like a it's like a reverse enzo cast and no no you know what it is it's a it's a mixed gender dalton castle situation that's what you yes want for. Yes, they could dress them up as uh, hyenas. Yeah, <laughs> Alexa, Alexa can just call them her boys. They can make a <laughs> chair for her. <laughs> oh my! Oh, this is this is such a good idea. <laughs> this, would, this would be a great idea. Because I mean, I love that that she is like literally the tiniest girl out there. And Mm -hmm. she has, like, you know, like, two guys, you know. Like, she needs a little extra muscle, you know what I mean? I know she doesn't, but she she could use it, you know what I mean? She is Polly Pocket. She she absolutely is Polly Pocket. Uh, With an attitude. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> with an attitude. Sword, she is. Showtile, Polly Pocket with an attitude. She is She's, sassy Polly Pocket. <laughs> she is Polly Pocket meets Monster High. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Oh, man. Bravo. Bravo. Wow. wow. Or Bratz Dolls. <laughs> oh, no. It's a stop so, at the Monster High. So the high. SmackDown promos tonight were awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh boy! Um, yeah, and are that excited about Jack Swagger being on SmackDown? Let's do something. Yeah, Wait, cool. what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jack Swagger's on SmackDown. Uh, we we went from we went from five minutes of like, oh, Jack Swagger's contract's coming up. Like they didn't say when. I thought they was, said two weeks. Was there a trade, or did he did he lose to Jinder Mahal in a loser leaves Raw match? <laughs> Apparently, oh my god, that <laughs> that should be Jinder's gimmick. Apparently, his, apparently his contract ran up, which means Raw only signs people to two month contracts. <laughs> That's another thing. Like last night, Jinder Mahal come out and he was saying like, "Oh, I found peace and and through yoga and all this Indian stuff." And everybody's like, oh, oh, we oh, hate wow. anything that's different." And then Jack Swagger comes oh, out Bobby, and everybody's Bobby. like, "Yay!" Oh, Bobby, let's uh, let's not be real. It's not that they hate anything that's different. They hate anything that's brown. I, oh. I, I, I have a I have a question, and we we don't have to expand on this if no one wants to. Um. Was was the day after nine eleven the right day to do that gender yes. gimmick? Yeah, that was my thought too. <laughs> yeah. but anyways, was was that really the right timing to do? I mean, good for Jinder Mahal. I hope he get. I hope he has a new gimmick. I hope he's the Guru Sanjay Dutt. I hope that's where he's going with this. Oh, that be or, or just or just the gimmick he jacked from Inspire Pro Wrestling. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, I'm gonna say that right now. Oh, I know you're watching. Um, Oh, okay, um, Eamon, expound on that because no, no, they know, they know, but, but we don't. We anyways, don't. okay. Anyways, um, I posted. If anybody what is a fan of Futurama, I posted the foreigner <laughs> saying like, "My customs are different than you. Look at my crazy passport." <laughs> uh, when Bender was in the robot fighting thing, uh. ultimate robot fighting. <laughs> Which he won five hundred thousand dollars for losing. Yeah, but but we talked about this on on wrap up a little bit. I think it's it's, it's enough to expound here. I like this idea, and Mike, I think you did too, of like this whole like contract expiring negotiation kind of crossover thing being being kind of a competitive thing that kind of keeps us alive, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want them to treat it like actual sport. Mm-hmm. Like I truly feel that Miz should not defend that title until his contract gets renegotiated. And he can say, if you do not renegotiate my contract to get the terms that I want, I'm going to Raw and I'm bringing the belt with me. Mm-hmm. So like, that that would be amazing. Does this mean that Jack Swagger moved to main event instead of superstars now? Hey, yes. No, uh, Bobby. Bobby, if Kurt Hawkins can have a talking segment on SmackDown, <laughs> Jack Swagger can be. Yeah, Jack Swagger. I was going to say, say hi to Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Oh, also, yeah, that's the, that's the other thing. Not to go back to the Bray Wyatt stuff. Kane beats Bray Wyatt at the pay-per-view. What's he doing now? He's wrestling on main event against Fandango. Like, <laughs> Hey, they got to finish their feud. <laughs> yeah, the, they got to finish that, that on SmackDown. That, they got to finish that, pardon the pun, hot feud. Yeah, uh, <laughs> fire. Yeah, fire, fire, yeah. fire bad. Okay. On that note, hey, I want to give a shout out to our good friends, Slice on Broadway. Also, hot. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Also, hot, also I'm, so I'm sorry. fresh. Hot also, and fresh. Like rain. You hot. know you can also you know you can also eat pizza cold. Yes, you you can, mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's pizza that won't get relegated to the B show of main event. It is Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway dot com supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, which, uh, which helps us get people in the studio. We've had some in the past here. We have some earlier for the awesome cast, of course, here on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. And uh, and they're here. In If you're in Pittsburgh, if you happen through Pittsburgh, uh, uh, check them out. They're here in Beachview. They're down in Carnegie, PA on Main Street or over at PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You can check them out. Game day or not, as my Mike did when he was in town just a couple weeks ago. Yes. Yes, I, I did. I was, Slice on Broadway treated me very well. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about their pizza a lot and how delicious it is. They also have really great garlic nuts. Highly recommended. Come for the pepperoni pizza. Stay for the garlic knots. Check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Slice on Broadway on the Facebook, the Instagram, at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. We'll be back after this with the big question. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. This is Johnny Gargano, the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, and the whole shebang. Not Johnny Bananas, by the way, even though I like to eat them. And you're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey, guys. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show here with Bobby F. J-Town, Mad Mike, Eamon, two please. It's time for your big question. So, guys, um, we've been wrestling fans for a little bit now, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A few months. A few, a months, few months. A little bit. And, I mean, if anything, we talk about WWE and their, their ability to be a machine, a marketing machine, right? I mean, you look at what's happening with guys, you know, that, that have been mistreated for their talents and other promotions like AJ Styles and other people, right? Uh, but even Bobby Roode and just being being presented in a certain way, and uh, a, a, a glorious light, a of. glorious light, glorious light. Um, so WWE has put things on, uh, put faces and everything on a lot of different things. There was a curious uh, 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 talk on Cole Cabana's podcast with Edge about like what's the weirdest thing that you've been put on, and I think he said like underwear. Uh, he thought was a box of shorts. He thought was a little weird. Uh, you know, of course, CM Punk with those uh, ice cream bars that some of us had back in the day. I wish they'd still bring back. Um, oh, oh man, well, they're not going bars. to now. If anything, now. they're going to be U- they're going to be UFC ice cream bars. It'll only take you two minutes to eat them. <laughs> oh, and it'll freeze. cost five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, so there's been a lot of things. I saw an article about uh, uh, John Cena's getting put on dog toys. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, so Not cat toys. what is the weirdest product that you have tried or purchased in your fandom? <laughs> oh, Bobby's got one. I'm looking in, at it right now. In your fandom, looking, what is I'm the, looking around. the thing that you got your hands on, or maybe the thing you wanted, but, 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 but if you have it, the thing that you, you got, that was the, the, I got that because the WWE was on it in some fashion. Or it could be WCW if, if, if it's that. Like something wrestling related. Really, Hulk Hogan or something was on it, right? What was the weirdest thing that you and got into? Bobby, right after that response, I have to check out what yours is. Okay. Um, for for the visual audience, um, I am moving my camera to oh, show you here we go. the item. Here we go. We're moving. That I have. We're moving over here. Whoa! It is a Stone Cold Steve Austin cookie jar wow the most redneck thing i own wow and here's all my pops as well but yeah the stunk <laughs> steve austin cookie jar definitely the weirdest wwe thing i own now is it wwe produced i it? think it is i think it was licensed by wwe and produced by them sure it was sure i it bought was. it at ollie's good stuff cheap <laughs> which i call the indoor flea market Fantastic. Basically what it is. Eamon, do you have one? The closest I can think of, I can't think of anything that I've bought that was like really weird when it comes to wrestling related. I remember, I don't think I have it now, but I think for the longest time I had a 
like I think it, I think it's kind of weird people when you have like cardboard uh, like life size cardboard cutouts of people. Um, I had one of Eddie Guerrero because my mom was working for a company that was sponsoring a WWE live event, and she <laughs> brought it home for me as and it's like your like actual size whatever like car, I mean I guess that's kind of weird like oh, I mean Amy. somebody. That might Amy. be worth a lot. Amy. <laughs> Sword, Sword kind of has one of those. Oh, I don't know well, what you're does, talking yes. about. I don't know I mean, what you're talking about. <laughs> At least it wasn't Chris Benoit, and then you'd be haunted forever. Oh, Ooh. yeah, that would suck. Think, um, wow. But no, I don't think I have it anymore. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, that's the closest thing I can think of. Because as far as stuff I've bought, like. Okay. All right. All right. Um, can I? Okay, this is not something I bought or put money into, but can I say that it cost me a lot of time? Okay. That diabolical WWE uh, uh, super, card? super card. Holy super crap! Card. Holy crap! I can't. I can't tell you that I had fun playing it, but I kept playing it. And I stopped playing. I, I finally <laughs> I did. Yeah, but dude, I was on that game for a while. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, me too. Thank you. Thank you. WWE Immortals for coming out because <laughs> mm. you were actually interesting. So I stopped playing that too. I, playing that too yeah. I, I came back to it. I came back to it, and and also, well, I also, um, well, basically, uh, Injustice, which had Suicide Squad. I got a Suicide Squad Harley Quinn on there, so that got me kind of back into it. Uh, and Mortal you Kombat mean, X. Suicide Squad Alexa Bliss. I was Mortal- gonna say <laughs> Suicide Squad Alexa Bliss coming to Immortals, crossing over. Um, and um, and uh, Mortal Kombat X are kind of the same game and have a lot of s- similar mechanics, so uh, it's really nice to kind of play all three of them in tandem. So there's that. Uh, Mike, what do you got? Um, Sorg, this may not be the weirdest thing I have. I, I, I have a Triple H license plate that says the game on it. Um, okay. But I also have this. Oh, no! And for the, yeah, um, for the audio people, I, I have a stuffed animal of Scotty Two Hotties Worm. Um, it, 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 ha- it has his, his trademark lid with the uh, spiky hair, the take care, spike your hair. And he's wearing a jacket that says Worm Crossing. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, this may also be... Obnoxious. <laughs> this may be the weirdest thing I own. It's a... Um, wow. That's a, I, that's a, it's, it's bigger than I expected. That's, that's, hey. what I, that's what I tell the ladies, Sork. Um, but I, I think there is also one thing that... like uh, We could say... The WWE Garden Gnomes. We could say that. Um, mm-hmm. I would like to point out a thing that just came out, Sorg. Just came out, hot off the presses. You can buy it at your local Toys R Us. Um, WWE Zombie Figures. They've had those before, oh, too. those figures you had to piece together? Those they, st- yeah. they still have those. They still make those. The Creative They're Superstar terrible. ones. Um. The WWE zombie ones are worse. <laughs> they're uh, they're 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 not good action figures. They're, they're 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 just not good action figures at all. Like I get Mattel wants to expand their brand. Um, to do that, I have an idea. Barbie WWE dolls. Make the yeah. entire women's division as Barbie dolls. Yeah. And you could even have Alexa Bliss as one of the pint size ones. I mean, even <laughs> Shira was basically Barbie ish He Man toys, right? Mm-hmm. So. I mean, they're doing that with the. Um, there, there's a new line of uh, toys called DC Superhero Girls, right? And they're all they're all about Barbie size. You could do that with WWE uh, women's wrestlers. Yeah, I saw a commercial. And they about, would sell like hotcakes. I saw a commercial of that, and I was just like, "Wow, that's actually that's that's really cool that they're doing that, right?" As, as a comic book fan, and especially, I mean, I I made a comment on Twitter when uh, when uh, 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 Becky won, like there was a shot to a little girl on the shoulders, right? And uh, watching her reaction when she realized that Becky won, right? Like the mm-hmm. little girls are into this stuff, especially with the women's division, or um, even, or even. Yeah, seeing... and and you know what sucks, Sorg? You know what really sucks? If 
you're a little girl and you want uh, women's wrestling action figures, one per box. Mm-hmm. One per box. They are the chase figures. They are incredibly hard to find. And wow. yet we still get 18,000 Randy Orton's. Yeah. yeah. No one buys. Yeah. The only one I, the only uh, female wrestling action figure that I've seen not fly off shelves is Renee Young. Uh, because, yeah, but, but also, well, it looks horrible. Well, yeah, it looks bad. And I'm sorry, I love Renee Young. Why would anyone want a Renee Young action figure? Do they make Who? her look like the backstage monster in WWE 2K16? <laughs> no. No, that would be the Renee Young zombie action figure. Yeah. Oh. That'll happen eventually. Oh. What? Who hates Renee Young so much that she looks so horrible in the video games, in the toys? How are you consistently getting such an adorable person so wrong? I plastic. think it's just a matter of like of of circumstance because some of the toys they've recently been producing are not good face yep. wise. Mm-hmm. Like the, the the new Sasha Banks one looks awful. Chad, like, Gable, Chad Gable looks like Dalton Castle. He does. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. Um, can I also can I note one that I want? Like it's kind of a weird one that I would want. A to CM get, Punk but, shot glass because oh, I no. think they sold that. That oh, really? I just I just find that great. <laughs> That's really funny. I find wow. that hilarious. Um, one that they are actually selling in WWE uh, shop, um, both for the fact that it is kind of weird, but also for the practical reasons for it. The Kevin Owens replica shorts. They're expensive. I've considered buying those at least eight. Because I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm the type of guy who, if I don't have to, I will always wear gym shorts. <laughs> They're $34. I, I've, consider, really I've considered buying them at least 20 times. Are that's they really like, expensive, but I think there's that's a weird kind of aspect of like, yeah, I don't know. Are are they like tap out brand perhaps? No. No, no I don't, they're just like Kevin Owens replica shorts. Yeah. They just say Kevin Owens prize fire on. They're $34. <laughs> <laughs> All right, side note from that. Speaking of Kevin Owens. And They're shorts being comfortable. <laughs> and being comfortable. <laughs> Did you guys see? And I saw that Ring of Honor even shared this photo. Um, th- this photo of yeah. Kevin Owens with his Universal Championship and yes. Adam Cole with his Ring of Honor Championship. That was amazing. Just sitting in two twin beds in in a hotel somewhere, <laughs> just right. hanging out with their belts. How how cool! Like it, it, that's one of the moments where it's like, how cool of a world do we live in wrestling wise? Mm-hmm. Or like that's happening. Well, I mean, if you think about it, the main champions in WWE right now are Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let, let's tell that to someone from 2010 and see shit's, what they think about shit's that. Shit's weird, guys. Oh, they'll never work in WWE. Yeah. No, they'll never work. They'll never, oh. They won't get over. They won't put butts in the seats. Like, uh, I mean, $34 for shorts, guys. <laughs> and, and, and the previous... The previous champions of those four of those three <laughs> titles Mike mentioned were John Moxley, uh, uh, Prince Devitt, and some of Joe. Oh, and, and Tyler Black. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. What are we living in? And you know who has you know who has thirty four dollars. <laughs> and you know who hasn't had a world title in over a year? John Cena. Yep. Uh, Randy Orton. Kane. None of those guys have. Yep. Yep. It's a wonderful world right now. Wonderful world. Well, it's about to get a whole lot better this week. We got the Cruiser Weight Classic, the uh, finale, the live finale, two hours. Excited. They're going to fill out with, a, I think, a pretty cool tag match that, that I heard of. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and of course, the semifinals and the final. So, so three matches of the tournament will be there live. Um, man, is, is the CWC not the, the greatest gift to wrestling fans that WWE has ever produced. It's coming to Raw on Monday. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, also, seeing season finale, and it's actually the final episode you'll see for a while of a program uh, <laughs> happening. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, or with like that concept. We have seasonal stuff now on WWE. Um, geez, I know, uh, uh, Bobby, I, I, I don't know how deep you've been in the CWC because I know I've been listening to Watch these guys. Episode. What's that? Watched every episode so far. Um, but the greatest thing, the greatest thing from this is just tuning into the network on a Sunday and, uh, yeah, we're running a marathon of the mm-hmm. CWC. Um, I will sit I've, down. I've actually changed who I wanted to win, surprisingly. Well, let's, let's look at the contenders. Who Who is in the, in the final four here? What are the matches here coming up? 
Well, you, you got your TJ Perkins. Mm-hmm. You got your TJ Perkins, and he's going up against Kota Bushi. Mm-hmm. And the, and then you got your your Zack Sabre Juniors, or according oh. to Sword Will Osprey, Will Osprey, Will, Will Osprey against El Dragon Azteca Junior. <laughs> no, Rick no, uh, not in the tournament. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but you got your uh, Zack Sabre Junior going up against Grand Metallic. Mm. Holy crap, they're going to be good matches. Mm. They're going to be really good, you guys. Um, I Sword wanted Will Osprey, Osprey to win. <laughs> I think I switched my allegiance to uh, TJ Perkins after, after uh, oh, what he go. posted on Instagram about like nobody said I could make it in this business, but I did. Nobody said I could beat, uh, or nobody said I could do such and such and such. And then he's like, nobody said I could beat Kodo Bushi, but I will. You know, I was like, wow, that's really cool. I want you to win. That's great. Yeah, you know? that's great. Um. Yeah, and 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 this is going to be pretty much a setup for whatever happens on Monday with this division, which I hope is a setup for something we see at at, at Clash of Clash of Champions as well. Um. So I, I I don't think it is. I think it's too soon to have a turnaround on that. You think? I mean, there won't yeah. be just a feature match or something on there. You think? No, they'll probably have a feature match on there, but I don't think we'll get a cruiserweight title. Oh no, 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 no! I don't expect okay. to. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, okay. I, it worked. We're gonna get um, at least at least a little bit, maybe a month of introduction of this is what cruiserweights are, right? And, and you they're get gonna, to they're gonna redo the cruiserweight parade on Monday. Night Raw. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, that's one thing I don't want to see. I don't want to see like the the big um like here's the list of everyone in here. We're all gonna have a two man promo at the same time. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to see that at all. That's not gonna be good. But either way, um, I've, I've loved this. It's been tremendous. Um, great outside the box, outside of WWE style, you could say. Um, and uh, and it, it's it's you're seeing it filter up. Like I said, it was one of Triple H's babies, and uh, and, and be able to showcase this stuff that we've been seeing for how long that we talk about on the Mayhem Show every every year uh, mm-hmm. or every week. Uh, you know, and, 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 and seeing that kind of exposed to a lot of people. And I'm hopefully that filters it down. Cause a lot of these people are not coming back to WWE, you know, a, a few of them will be. And I think we will see more of those faces as we go. And, you know, maybe some of them pop up again in a year from now for whatever reason. Right. Um, so I, I, I think that's really cool. It was, it's a good gateway for that. It's a good in action tryout for a lot of these guys. And, uh, and, 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 and it's good, good, it's more opportunities, you know. What was the big thing uh, uh, 15 years ago? You know, with uh, with WCW going away, there's less places for people to work, and now oh. WWE is giving a lot more opportunity for a lot more people to work there with as many brands as they have going on. Um, and 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 it's cool that you know, even on the top, I guess they're not really. It's not like it used to be that you have to look like a John Cena necessarily to be a champion. Look at the champions! Holy crap! Um, mm-hmm. But still, even if you're not um, um, raw TV friendly, you have a spot maybe with an, an NXT or a uh, uh, Cruiserweight Classic kind of thing. And who else? Who knows what else comes out from this? So uh, really cool. Or TNA. TNA is still out there too. Um, <laughs> is it? Is it really? <laughs> out there. Is doing great. Out there in the wind somewhere. You know. You know. A Ring of Honor doing great things. They're going to be here in Pittsburgh as well. Looking forward to that. Um, Wait for their trios championship. Really? They they were seriously doing that, huh? They are seriously doing that. Cool, cool. I maybe I need to get back into Ring of Honor a little bit again. If you can find it. Uh, it's on Sinclair Broadcasting. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I know we do have a, on local TV. I know that's been a problem with you, Mike, for a bit. Um, I, and I'm with you. Like, uh, and I, I can't complain too much because it's free. But Ring of Honor is like anytime I've gone to start watching it again, I'll start going to the website, and, and you had the same problem where they will not update it when they're yeah. supposed to. And and they still haven't worked out their TV schedule where after a pay per view they still have three weeks of bullshit that have nothing to do with the pay per view. It just happens. I I still think that's not. I think that's a separate problem. I think that's something that that isn't um, a problem for them for the way they run things. But um, but 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 either way, you know, still having that show. Because I don't know how many people watching that show are really going to buy their pay-per-view these days. You know what I mean? Like, it feels so novel 
at this point. Yeah, but you know, maybe if they actually ran a TV show that was weekly properly and booked to a pay-per-view, people would buy that pay-per-view more. Yeah, subjective art time. But anyways, um, but uh, looking forward to that Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, we'll be checking that out. Of course, you guys are going to do a recap on a midweek war on Wednesday night. Is that right? Uh, we are going. We're, yeah, we're going to do a live uh, post post uh, show on the CWC, and then we'll have our uh, midweek war proper with TNA Impact and Lucha on Thursday. Awesome. TNA, the way you said TNA and Impact separately. Yeah, TNA, NXT, and Impact. It's three shows now. <laughs> um, of course, uh, for those, please follow um, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter or the YouTube channel. I believe you should get a notification of some sort when these guys go live on uh, on YouTube Live for for that stuff. Uh, so, looking forward to that as usual. I listened to your uh, CWC recap while I was taking my shower the other day. Um. Good Not sure how to take that, Sork. That's where I listen to podcasts yeah. when I start my day. So it's, it's it's how I get my news, and it was an off news day. So, so I Sork. don't share it with everyone. Yeah, I mean, I just did. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. That's fine, Sork. We'll, we'll be sure to throw in a little bit of like sexy time voice in next time. Thirty-four dollars for shorts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we know what Bobby learned from wrestling this week. Oh, we're starting that? Yes, we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, unless you have anything else, Bobby. I Bobby, mean, did you learn anything else about that that wasn't about shorts? Um, come back and... Okay. <laughs> Mad learned Mike. a lot about Alexa Bliss. Hey, yo. <laughs> and myself. <laughs> <You're sure. laughs> Mad uh, Mike? I, I, I learned that you have to be entertaining to win wrestling matches unless your name is Kane. Dude, I'm ah, okay. Other than the thing we yeah. talked about Sorg, before, Sorg, Sorg, what no, I'm sorry, Sorg. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. That tank, you're not, that you're can, not gonna be able to convince me one way or the that other. That can could go out there and do a no DQ match and get put through a table. And then I just watched him as Isaac Yankum on SummerSlam 1995 last week against Bret Hart at SummerSlam and basically like a major match at SummerSlam. I know. Major for uh-huh. that era of at SummerSlam. And he just came out and did like a no DQ match with little notice on, on a pay-per-view here in 2016, Kane is the fucking man. As Sorry, far as Kane, it, was a, it was a house show match. Kane is probably a very nice person. Shouldn't have won. It was a house show match, Sork. Still. And they, yeah. pro- they probably did that exact same, ha- they probably did that exact same match on the house show the night before. Not with the table spot. That's yeah, for sure. I nope. guarantee they did. Well, they, they're down doing table. They're not doing table yeah, spots they do. like that. There's yeah, no they one do. Table. That's how Seth Rollins went on his knee. Yeah, but they're not Seth had Seth had a table match with Kane. Yes, but that th- that was a a commentator's table. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. All right, uh, yeah, I'm talking about the pay per view. Okay, but sorry. oh, okay. Well, but sorry, sorry. I'll settle this right now. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Eamon, what did you learn about being with Will Osprey this week? Uh, I learned that wrestling fans can be mean sometimes. You think? <laughs> After we were just mean to... So oh, have you been that. listening to this episode? True. It, it, it's not wrong. Uh, no, wrestling fans can be mean sometimes. I've never had felt so like terrified of like a group of like a couple hundred people like all surrounding me, surrounding me chanting, Who are you? <laughs> This is, and I was, I, that is literally the scariest thing I've ever had to experience. Eamon, are you sure you just weren't in England? <laughs> that's I, that's a not. thing. That's a I, thing that's they do. Are, yeah. I, I know that's a thing they do. I was not in England. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it was are you sure? Time. Will Ospreay was there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> Paige just, was also there. <laughs> we should just call this show Will Ospreay Jr. Will Ospreay Jr. <laughs> You know, this I, is Will Ospreay Jr.'s house. You know, I can just turn your mics off. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> oh, actually, what? sorry. I did learn. I did learn one other thing. I did learn one other thing. If you want to ensure that WWE cannot make you change your ring name, just change your actual name. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I asked. So I asked. Just change your actual we, name it, to. There's what, nothing please. that gets me madder. Other than thirty-four dollars short, Ryback. <laughs> I can't wait for Ryback to do speaking uh, appearances where he talks about uh, how uh, being gay doesn't make the world work. I can't wait for that. Wait, it, what? That's, what? Ultimate what? War- that's, oh, a, that's oh. an Ultimate Warrior. Reference, yeah, because he, he's, he's following the, the gay Ultimate community. <laughs> the gay community. <laughs> did Ryback put? Did Ryback just write Ryback on his vision board? And then, like, say, no. "Oh, I, I must become Ryback by legal name." Bobby, it's it's the secret last chapter of the secret. You must change your name to Ryback. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's like in a... the back of every secret. At, l- at least, okay. it, at least he didn't go Rye Borg and do like a whole Star Trek yeah. fetish. Can I say what I learned in wrestling? <laughs> sure, Bobby. <laughs> I learned that thirty-four dollars shorts. I know. I learned that um, by the end of the seven match series, uh, Cesaro is going to come out in a. Uh, vest made of tape. Holy crap! Yeah. Athletic yes. tape. I learned what that tape was. I because oh, I, I, I I asked the yeah, question. Yeah. I, I was like, "What is you know? How is tape actually helping his back?" And kinesiology. Was, yeah, yeah, kinesiology. So. Yeah, that which, which is not a concept I'm I'm, I'm aware of. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's helpful. Okay. I, I guess it, the tape eases the muscles, and uh, yeah. So it's I, I I thought it was just like, hey, there's an injury here. Slap some tape on it. Listen, you're talking to a so, guy. Sorry, there's there's one more thing I wanted to point out. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 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 no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm not done with this though. You're okay, talking sorry. to the guy who uh somebody had an injury, they had a skin thing happening, um, and, and they were in like the second match and they wanted to make sure they didn't bleed. So they they're like, Can you tape me? I'm like, I don't have tape. So what I ended up doing is wrapping this guy's shoulders, both his shoulders, in kind of a vest pattern with basically duct or gaffer tape, and he went and had a match. And I want to point out that the tape held up throughout the match, and the guy was getting awesome. thrown around pretty much. Bobby, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, it Are, looked awesome. Bobby, how, I mean, what the fuck did you think when that guy came out in, in in basically duct tape wrapped around his shoulders. What did that look like? I didn't like know to what you? it was until you said what it, it was tape. And I'm like, that was tape? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried because it was wrapped around and he's a very muscular little guy. And mm. uh and, and, and I was like I'm like, I don't want to strangle like parts of your body with this thing, you know, and keep make it too it tight. A baby's vest, but it worked. It did look like a weird baby's vest, right? Yes. Um, it was, which wouldn't surprise me, knowing this person. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know why we're not disclosing who this person yeah, is, but fine. I it's mean, fine. that's weird. Uh, it was well off, right? We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Zach Saber Jr. Amen, Amen, Baylor. Amen, Amen. Amen. are we going to talk about your scary experience uh, over on the Indie Mayhem show uh, this week? We can, sure. I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot I wait. You? No. So I can get you back for this wait, show. Amen. Amen. What, what's happening? Do you want me to make that scarier? No, no. stop it, Bobby. No, no, not Who the are you? Who are you? It's a puppet. Hmm. Oh, uh, Sork. Yeah. I, I learned that Kevin Owens is the best person in professional wrestling. That's why do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because because they can sell shorts for thirty five dollars for them. <laughs> no, thirty four dollars short. Thirty four, but well, thirty five <laughs> with tax. It's not 35. that crazy. <laughs> thirty five with tax. Let's be expensive. Honest. But um, in his match with Roman Reigns last night, Kevin Owens punched Roman Reigns in the chest and pulled his hand back because <laughs> of the vest and shook his hand like it hurt. Nice. <laughs> I think my. I think my favorite was when the crowd was chanting "Roman sucks" and and he he's got him in the headlock or whatever. He's like, "Yeah, they're right. You do suck." <laughs> he said, "What was it?" He said, "You're not a good guy. You're not a bad guy." <laughs> and I didn't finish it. So I know. Oh my god, guys, they're actually listening. <laughs> mm-hmm. They yes. didn't put Roman in the main title picture. I didn't think they were going to. I thought they totally would. Amen. Really, Amen. Survivor Series is still going to be a thing. Nobody, oh, I, nobody oh, I saw. Be back, I know he'll be back eventually, but but nobody saw the Rusev come back a mile away. I no, I, no, I saw that coming. If you, if you didn't him. have honest, if you like, didn't have honest to goodness fears that Roman was going to be put in that triple threat, like I did. You haven't then. Then you haven't been watching like the no, no, no. For the last I will tell you. I will tell you. I had fears about Roman being in that title picture. 
until I saw the vacation photos with Rusev reading Harry Potter uh, mm -hmm. and Lana showing a lot of Lana, apparently. Um, Sorg, I'm, I'm still working on that Harry Potter wrestling infographic. Oh, yeah, still you need to check that out. Check out but, the but, all, but all we know, like, they could have just scrapped the entire feud and just been like, we're, we're just going to put Roman in the main title picture. I think, like, I, think, like, I, but, love, but I love how you guys over and underestimate WWE at the same time. Uh, for as, good as, reason. As for good I reason. Know, man. These guys are smarter than Roman you. Roman has a new catchphrase, too. But, but you know what's the best part? Roman may beat Rusev for the U.S. title, and then he'll just be caught up in the U.S. title picture. Nope, nope. Amen. Amen. Unification. We, well, you got to hope. Unification, Amen. Hope. Amen. I really Amen. wish you we had his expression You want to know why I say unification? Because why Raw's adding an extra title. Well, you got to – leave me alone. Leave me alone. Let me dream. <laughs> okay. So Amen. then it wouldn't be a U.S. Universal just, champ. Yes, the United Universal wait, title. And if we chant, oh, I had a headache. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, some of you guys out on social media also answer the question of what you learned from wrestling this week in the longest what you learned segment ever in the Wrestling Mayhem Show history. Uh, That's not true. Alex Carr is over on the Facebook, says, All praise he's Slater. Hashtag Slater's going to slate. Oh, yes. <laughs> the best mm -hmm. thing ever, guys. <laughs> Um, he Joe? has a shirt, Sorg. He does. He does. He has I love, kids. And I love that Shane. I love that Shane McMahon realized that he has a new shirt, like in the ring tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Joseph learned that spot. even jobbers can get a brief spot in the main event on TV. Uh, Andrew, uh, I'd uh, vote for Rhino if I could. I, I you know, I've seriously considered. I've seriously Moving considered emailing <laughs> Rhino and saying. What can I do to help you? <laughs> like, I'm not even in your state, but man, what can I do to help you win? Because I want to see this happen. Um, but anyways. I might well, be he already here. does have the support of Pittsburgh. Sorry. Yes, he does. And he'll Kurt, be here. Kurt Angle's in his ad. And he will be here in at Hardcore Homecoming. His final appearance. Um, his final appearance. The current WWE Tag Team Champion on SmackDown will be here taking on Sammy Callahan. I believe it's October 15th um, yeah. at the yep. Court Time Sports Center, uh, co-promoted with IWC. So there you go. Did you hear Lowell's going to be on that card? It's stacked. It's stacked. It is a lot of people on that it's card. It's stacked. crazy. Bob Holly, is, Ethan is, Carter is Will III. Ospreay on that card? No, no Will, Will Ospreay. Ospreay <laughs> Jessica Havoc. I think Candice LeRae was added. Uh, Wait, um, did you say Jessica Havoc? Sorg, you can't even pronounce basic English words correctly. <laughs> If they're a wrestler's name, you can't pronounce them correctly. Listen, Eamon. Havoc. Listen, Eamon. I have been podcasting for 10 years. I have been podcasting since you've been in a fucking womb. Oh, I can yeah. say words <laughs> however I fucking want to be. Oh, you, oh, you know the old WCW pay-per-view, Halloween Havoc? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, you know what? That was just Sorg's Boston accent. That's what that was. Indie Mayhem's gonna be fun. You can go to Harvard. The wicked awesome. And you can watch Jessica Havoc. Matt Carlin's learned that suddenly everybody hates <laughs> Dean Ambrose. <laughs> and over on the Twitters are uh, yeah, da, 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 Red Settler four seven eight learned that smackdown and raw have their difference but ball jokes unite them as does everything in pro <laughs> so, wrestling i can't wait for you to watch lucha underground so you can see all the matches of son of havoc <laughs> this has been your wrestling mayhem show check us out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so we can fix amon's internet and i can look him dead in the eye over the internet <laughs> this is really like beneficial this i uh, also check out the pod crawl if you're in pittsburgh there's going to be a pod crawl uh, uh i will be there uh, international pro wrestling day our friends get jag off that international pro wrestling day no international podcast day you said pro wrestling day fuck international <laughs> podcast day <laughs> In conjunction with our friends at Ridgers, RiversEdgePGH.com, the great 24-7 music channel, and some of our shows are over there as well from Sorgatron Media. Not the wrestling shows just yet. Uh, shouts to our friends at the 405Media.com, uh, uh, spinning us over there as well on the stream and on download. 
and uh, everybody else for being part of the show. Sign up. Also in the Pittsburgh area, we'll be doing, or you can join us on Twitch. We'll be broadcasting there. Our friends looking for group. We're going to be doing an N64 No Mercy tournament the Friday before the pay-per-view um, to 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 celebrate No Mercy, more or less, right? Uh, so we're going to have some fun with that and uh so fabulous prizes we're going to be giving away a hundred dollar gift certificate for indie wrestling.us for the first place fifty dollars for second place first place will also get two tickets to rob van dam at the pittsburgh improv coming up in november uh thanks to our friends at vicious outcast wrestling for that uh and and there might be some more stuff uh ten dollar entry fee if you're a patreon by the end of september uh, in the Pittsburgh area and want to be a part of this, you will actually get half off the entry fee. The entry fee will include, of course, the prizes as well as uh, food and maybe some other goodies as well. We're working out here. Uh, so uh, if you're interested, uh, check that out. There's a Facebook event over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook gr- uh, page, actually, uh, uh, and let us know. So we just have an idea how many people are coming. Uh, let us know. Give us a note that you want in on the tournament. We might have a little bit of pre-sign up for that so we can figure out our brackets for it. Uh, big big thanks and check out looking for group on Twitch in the meantime as well. Um, wrestling Mayhem Show live dot dot com ten p.m. Eastern time. We talk wrestling for a good while. It's now almost midnight on the East Coast for this, and we still kind of have half a show to record. Remember our interviews coming up uh, for with Josh Alexander, the Walking Weapon, and Matt Light, comedian. It's going to be on that Rob Van Dam show. Uh, for Indie Mayhem Show. Recordings live in the next couple of weeks. Look for those times over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Facebook page event section. And uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll still say thank you to Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Thank you, Sword. And all of his British friends, whoever they may be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At Mad Mike 483, the Midweek War. Go watch it. Thank you, Sorg. And yeah, uh, Midweek War should be really fun this week. I legitimately don't know who's going to win because we're going to be back to ranking this week. So uh, oh, it should be interesting. Oh, and um, by the way, Lucha Underground this week, the WMD match. It's going to be amazing. I watched the Marty the Moth promo and it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, geez. Sorg, I am so excited for this. It's oh, jeez. mass destruction and match. I don't know what it is. Someone's going to die. Bobby <laughs> FJ Town on the Twitter and the Boss Battle podcast. Mm-hmm. Last week we talked about on Boss Battle how the PlayStation 4 looks like a staircase. <laughs> it does. The I saw. PlayStation 4 Pro. I saw this. The PlayStation Four, like the original PlayStation Four, uh, sitting yeah. in Chachi's apartment, and I'm like, it's like a weird Aztec structure in your TV oh. stand. Oh, have you seen the PlayStation Four Pro? I've, I've seen some pics of it. Yeah, bro, you don't know the PlayStation Four, bro. <laughs> bro, that PlayStation Four Pro is a staircase. Where can they find? Yeah, no. Where can they find that podcast? Uh. Hmm. Uh, that, that's, a, that's that's a staircase and i think bossbattle.com maybe bossbattlepodcast.com but i don't think you guys have been po- i don't think you guys Bobby, have been you know po- what else that is that's when an umpire has to carry out um first second and third base to a softball game okay that's what that is um but yeah, I, I don't think anybody's first. been updating bo- po- bossbattlepodcast.com so talk to uh, riz, riz about fired. that so <laughs> riz is fired <laughs> <laughs> He's got a few other things. It'll be there. This has been the Mayhem Show. See you guys next time. Mayhem out. Thirty four dollars for shorts, guys. Come <laughs> on. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.